Five in his only television interview for the political perspective today is independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, welcome. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Let's start with the Federal Reserve, Robert. And, and you need to tell us and the viewers, potential voters maybe, how you view the Fed and its success in bringing down inflation since a year ago, March. And thanks, Liz, for having me. Really happy to be here on this show. Um, I mean, I, you know, I'm happy that the inflation rate appears to be at least temporarily under control. But inflation is the most pernicious and insidious regressive tax on the poor. But high interest rates are also an enormous tax on the poor. The access to capital now that I'm seeing in poor neighborhoods all over the country is bankrupting small business in those neighborhoods. Our kids cannot get into a home because the interest rates have gone from 3 percent two years ago to, uh, for them, the real cost about 7.5 or 8 percent inflation to buy a home. And, uh, and the cost of housing has gone from $215,000 average cost in this country. The 400,000, so you have an entire generation of kids that is not getting into homes. The real, the, you know, the long term issue is spending because inflation and high interest rates are just symptoms, they're just medicine, and they both are poisonous medicines. And so we need to get spending under control. We need to dramatically reduce the military spending. War in Ukraine has already we've already committed one hundred and thirteen billion dollars to that. President Biden wants to raise the stakes. Two hundred billion. We we've spent we've wasted eight trillion dollars on useless wars over 20 years that have made Americans less safe abroad and at home and are bankrupting our country. We need to also get health care costs under and nobody's under control. That's the biggest cost. One four point three trillion a year. Nobody's talking about that except for me, and I'm the one who can bring those health care costs well, under control. Uh, hold on. To be fair, uh, President Biden has talked about uh, attacking, you know, high drug prices. Uh, Bernie Sanders just last week came out and said he was ready to subpoena three big pharma company CEOs because he's infuriated that the United States consumers are paying 10 times what France is paying. I mean, it's it's. These are developed countries. Forget Africa. Uh, so there are people out there that are trying to work on this. How would you tackle something like that? Well, yeah, and those are good starts to start you know, standing back against pharmaceutical companies that now own Congress and own the regulatory agencies. But the biggest thing we need to do is to reduce the chronic disease epidemic. And when my uncle was president, we were paying in 1960-63, we were paying about 4 percent of GDP on health care. Today, it's 20 percent. And the principal addition is chronic disease. So we've gone up to $4.3 trillion a year. We spend more than any other per capita nation in the world. We have the worst health outcomes. Why is that? Because we, the United States of America, has the highest chronic disease burden of any country in the world. We have neurological disease, obesity, autoimmune diseases that suddenly appeared in the 1990s and that are now the principal cause. Ninety three percent of Medicare bills are chronic disease. And, you know, we have the highest death rate during COVID. We had 16 percent of the COVID deaths. We only have 4.2 percent of the world population. So why is that? Well, CDC says because we have the highest chronic disease rate. So that's the real pandemic. And, and NIH will not do those studies to find out. We know there are in, these are environmental toxins that are causing this. Well, can Genes I, can do I not interrupt cause you? Because I, I'm looking right now as a business network. I'm looking right now, and the the stock market is going down. They want more punch bowl filling. They would like to see rates cut so that the money to borrow for whatever growth, whatever it is, uh, becomes cheaper. And today, uh, Jay Powell said, no, that is not going to happen. You know, I, I've seen some of your opinions on the Federal Reserve and, and specifically say, for example, the U.S. dollar, Bitcoin, and how you would uh, enable 
no taxes for people who make money off Bitcoin. And on top of everything else, you have also specifically said that you propose this idea to back the dollar with Bitcoin, beginning, though, with a very small number of treasuries. Uh, that's a very complicated issue, considering Bitcoin is incredibly volatile in price, although people are now getting to invest in it due to the Bitcoin spot ETFs. Yeah, well, first of all, I think we, we need to fix the Fed. We need to return U.S. sovereignty to the Fed. We need to return transparency to the Fed. We need to make the Fed more responsive to the markets and more responsive to the 12 regional banks, rather than have the kind of voodoo that now dictates Fed policy, and that is designed, really, to shift wealth upward to this new oligarchy of billionaires. In terms of my proposals, what I said is that I, I don't propose that all transactions in Bitcoin be untaxed, but that there be a cap to up to a certain amount. If if you if you if if you uh, if you allow uh, big holders like BlackRock to uh, to escape taxation on the increases in uh, in value for Bitcoin, you'd you'd give a windfall of trillions of dollars to the richest people in our country, which they don't need. But people who have small transactions are buying gasoline or buying uh, uh, okay. who are using it. We want to encourage people to use hard currency in the marketplace. My my other proposal is very, very modest, which is that we use a basket of hard currencies, including platinum, including gold, and including uh, uh, perhaps Bitcoin, uh, to, to, uh, as a basis for maybe 1 percent of certain classes of T-bills, and see what happens, see if that has any capacity to inject discipline into uh, uh, onto inflationary policies. Mm. I need to ask you some, some race, presidential race questions. Uh, you are running as an independent. Are you going to switch to libertarian? Can you just clarify that right here, right now? You know, we're talking to a lot of uh, the individual parties, so, and we'll continue to do that talk. We haven't made up our mind yet, but right now, we have the capacity to get on the ballot in every state as an independent candidate, okay. and uh, and that is our plan at the moment. So, they, you know, people have reached out to us from other parties, and we're talking to a number of other people. Um, the border, really quickly, Donald Trump and Speaker Johnson at the moment uh, appear to be at least on the same side as slow-walking the border plan that uh, Senate Republicans are pushing here, not just Democrats, but Senate Republicans. Obviously, the border is a disaster at the moment. There are people flooding over it constantly. What is your particular plan, if you could give it to us pretty quickly here, because we're running out of time, to fix that border from California through to Texas? Yeah, I, I will seal the border. Uh, I will use physical barriers in some of that. That's a 2,200-mile uh, border, and in some of it, you require physical barriers. The 27 gaps in the wall need to be filled. In the countryside, the rural areas, we need to reinstall the fences. Many of that were, them were removed, the long-range cameras, the video, the, uh, the sensor equipment, and the lights. And we need to put more border patrol, uh, patrolmen on the border. We need to put asylum court judges. We need to flood the, the border right now with asylum court judges so a lot of those uh, cases can be adjudicated before people come into our country or before they have long stick and be turned back at the border, in other words. And then it, we should reinstate the Migratory Protect the Migrant Protection Act, which requires a lot of the asylum cases to be adjudicated in Mexico if the people are coming from a different country to Mexico. When I was at the border, I interviewed about 110 people coming across between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. in Yuma, and only two of them even had asylum claims. So the rest of them said, I'm here for a job, and those people should not be allowed in our country except through legal yeah. immigration. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people would absolutely agree with you on that. Uh, thank you. We hope you'll come back as the race continues. Super Tuesday coming up. We shall see exactly what happens there. Robert F. Kennedy, Jr., thanks for coming on. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Les.